Hey, what's up P2P members? Coach Brian back with you for Daily Mobility and today we're talking about the fingers and the hands. Really important joints, especially if you use them professionally. So if you type, you play music, um, professional athletes, like different examples of people that use their hands day to day, uh, construction workers, um, a, a lot of people use their, their fingers and rely on them professionally. So if that's you, your brain places even more of a high priority, high importance on keeping these joints and the fingers healthy. And uh, you know, the motto, all the body, all the time, that's one good reason to move and use the fingers. And uh, just the general health of those joints, but also the joints that they affect. So I've had stories of people with low back pain actually have decreased uh, sciatic symptoms, decreased low back pain after moving their fingers. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm not making any claims here, but anecdotally, that's what's happened. So if you wanted to do like a forward bend where you're standing up and then you reach down, touch your toes, that could be a good assessment for today. Another great connection to make with the fingers and the hands is the shoulder joint. Uh, because those nerves that control the fingers pass through the shoulder, often those areas impact on each other. So what I want you to try is either your forward bend, if back discomfort or kind of some ache and discomfort, range of motion has been a challenge for you, or a shoulder range of motion. And in the shoulder, we're going to try some internal external rotation with this 90 degree elbow bend, okay? And then I'm gonna internally rotate or bring the hand down and in, trying to keep that elbow at the same height though. So I don't wanna get down here because that's gonna allow a lot more freedom of movement in the shoulder. To get a nice clean assessment, we wanna keep that elbow up high. See how far the hand can go in, you can check your angle, and then you can go back, external rotation, pushing the back of the palm back towards the wall or the space behind you, whatever that is. Uh, same thing on the other side. So get a side-by-side -side comparison again. The elbow and the armpit angle, again, at this nice 90 degree windows or angles. So for me, the left side, when I go internal, it feels kind of stuck. <laughs> Not quite as good range of motion wise as the right. So I'm gonna use that as the side that I wanna come back and reassess. First drill for today is finger circles. So we're gonna try to isolate and circle fingers individually. So the thumb, often pretty uh, doable or easy for people to map while keeping the other fingers still. So my goal here is I'm circling the thumb in space with a full smooth range of motion and keeping the other fingers still. If I find that there's areas where other fingers want to participate or move as well, we might go through and start to use the other hand to help stabilize that. So you'll see, yeah, some other, other fingers, fingers want to participate as I get to the middle finger. So I could come around and hold there or hold these two on either side of that circling or moving finger until you start to kind of clean those maps up and as you help stabilize the joints that you're trying not to move and move the one that you are typically that'll improve over time like you'll see an improvement in the brain map uh, this ring finger I know is going to need some assistance so I'm just going to right away help out and stabilize those next door neighbors so I'm trying to just get that one finger uh, circling in space and then going to the small finger the pinky finger and then you can shake out any tension from that surprising what a little finger circling can do uh, as far as maybe you're feeling some wrists some forearm tension if you're working on you know multiple repetitions and good quality movement there let's reassess and so for me that's a significant difference in shoulder range motion um, so in my training journal I would note okay for my left shoulder, maybe even the right, left hand finger circles are important. Um, then we're gonna go into flexion waves. You could of course do the finger circles on the other hand. For efficiency, I'm gonna walk you through flexion and extension waves next in the finger. So let's move to the other hand. Flexion waves, we curl the fingers one joint at a time into flexion. We press them down towards fingernails, towards the wrist and then we straighten and bring that back out, extending the fingers straight. So curl, flexion down, and then extension straight out. From the side, it looks like this. Trying to keep the wrist pretty neutral. 
So fighting, jumping into a lot of flexion or extension in the wrist and just moving those fingers as much as you can. If we can go flexion first, we can also go extension or straight finger first and then roll out of that the opposite direction. So as you smooth and speed these up a little bit, this should create like a wave-like pattern. Let's do a few on the other side. So flexion wave going down and then straight on the way back up. And if you need to, just put a little bit of a stabilizer with the other hand on that wrist to make sure that it's not doing a bunch of additional movement, right? We wanna isolate and then reintegrate. So you should be able to move these fingers individually of the wrist or on their own. And then that's gonna integrate into actually better movement mapping and better movement quality overall. Let's retest. So maybe you're doing a back uh, range of motion or forward bend. That one's similar to what I had before. So the finger circles still seem like a winner. That actually seems better on the right shoulder. Um, feels a little bit better, a little bit looser. So again, make that note of the high payoff performance drills. We're then gonna go into opening and closing sequence with the fingers. So this one, we're going to start with uh, thumb closing first and do your best to go one finger at a time, closing and then opening. And then if we started thumb first, of course we could also go pinky first. And we're trying to, again, differentiate or individualize those fingers. These two on the end tend to get mapped together. They're both controlled by the ulnar nerve, so sometimes we run into some mapping challenges. They're also uh, not usually the strongest fingers. So you can see that one. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily want to drive up all the way. And then, of course, and here, if I go little finger down, still working on some mapping with these two, differentiating those two. So that ring finger wants to come along for the ride with the little finger. Good. So working on opening, closing sequence, you can shake that out and then let's reassess. So test your forward bend or shoulder range of motion. That one improved for me there on the right. And so keep working on the hands. If you had like a shoulder pressing day or you're doing a lot of push-ups or planking in your session, uh, warm up those fingers. That can be potentially, if it was high payoff for you, really good thing to start with. Thanks, I'll see you in the next video.